Hello, and welcome as we begin our week of preparation for the third Sunday after Pentecost, June the 13th, 2021. Today I begin by reading for you the introduction to the theme for the day, which is what we normally find on the top of the bulletins, and then the prayer of the day. Then we will look at the first reading for Sunday and some reflections that I've gathered for today. First, the introduction. The mustard seed becomes a great shrub that shelters the birds, recalling ancient images of the tree of life. We would expect a cedar or a sequoia, perhaps. But Jesus finds power in the power of God better imaged in a tiny, no-account seed. It's not the way we expect divine activity to look. Yet the tree of life is here in the cross, around which we gather, the tree into which we are grafted through baptism, the true vine that nourishes us with its fruit in the cup we share. It may not appear all that impressive, but while no one is looking, it grows with a power beyond our understanding. Let us pray. O oh God, you are the tree of life. Offer shelter to all the world. Graft us into yourselves and nurture our growth, that we may bear your truth and love to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading for Sunday comes from the Old Testament prophet Ezekiel in the 17th chapter, verses 23 through 24. First, the introduction to the reading, then the reading itself, and the uh, reflections that I've gathered for today. Tree imagery is used in a messianic prophecy to tell how the Lord will choose someone from Judah's royal family the cedar tree, to reign over all of creation. This tree will be planted on Mount Zion, the location of the holy temple. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of the cedar. I will set it out. I will break off a tender one from the topmost of the young twigs, I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel, I will plant it, in order that it may produce boughs and bear fruit and become a noble cedar. Under it, every kind of bird will live in the shade of its branches, will nest winged creatures of every kind. All the trees of the field shall know that I am the Lord. I bring low the high tree, I make high the low tree, I dry up the green tree, and make the dry tree flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken, I will accomplish it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Being exiled was a big deal for the Jewish people, especially for those who put much hope in Jerusalem as the city of David, along with their kings, who were in the line of King David. Well into the New Testament times, we still trace the lineage of Jesus to the line of King David to establish Jesus as our Messiah. Language reflecting new life, a sprig coming from a tree or especially a stump, is a message of hope for those feeling hopeless. When King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon ordered King Zedekiah of Jerusalem blinded and deported to Babylon and Zedekiah's children publicly executed, he was trying to shatter any hope in the Davidic covenant, including Yahweh's promises to protect the Davidic king. In Nebuchadnezzar's eyes, these upstart Davidic kings had twice rebelled against him by making alliances with Egypt, and they could no longer be trusted. 
King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon also had the walls of Jerusalem, that great city, torn down to silence these brazen Jewish people who had placed their faith in Yahweh to always protect the king and the city. Nebuchadnezzar ordered the temple to be looted, burned, and leveled in a plan of ending their Jewish hopes of deliverance. The ancients believed that the more powerful God displayed ruling the heavens by that God's people ruling on earth. So in this way, King Nebuchadnezzar was showing that his God, Marduk, was more powerful than Yahweh, Israel's God. So what does this mean for the people of Judah? Well, some would doubt Yahweh's power and presence and concern and, and even existence. Others would deny that anything decisive had actually occurred and continue to preach sunny optimism and a quick end to any discomfort. These would have been called false prophets. Some would wonder aloud if Yahweh would ever again enter into a relationship with the people of Judah. These kinds of things were called lamentations. And some would wonder if they would want to take Yahweh up on such an offer, should it ever arrive. And they may have converted to worship Marduk. Many political and cultural groups near Israel, such as the Philistines and the Moabites, seem to disappear during the time of the Babylonian domination, precisely because they did not forge a new identity that could withstand the changes in the wake of the disaster. The, they more or less were absorbed into the Babylonian culture. Observers would likely have thought the same would happen to Judah, the Jewish people. Obviously, the Jewish people did persevere and so did their faith in Yahweh, their confidence in Jerusalem, and even in the lineage of King David. Prophets like Ezekiel, whose writings may at times sound obscure to us, provided a new theological teaching and new practices that allowed for strengthening the Jewish identity and faith despite the destruction of the temple, that great city Jerusalem and King Zedekiah's descendants. And even the ordained priesthood was destroyed. The hopeful prophecy of Ezekiel helped to keep their faith strong, even though they were exiled into a foreign land. This world has been through some extremely tough times since March of 2020. It will be a year that will never be forgotten and will be recorded in history as the pandemic that put all of us to the test. In some ways, we felt exiled, even though we literally never left home. The whole world went into lockdown and people felt deprived of nearly everything. Like Ezekiel was telling the exiles in today's reading, faith is the one thing that no one can take away from us. In the earlier parts of the book of Ezekiel, the prophet does not try to hide the truth of their situation. The Jewish people are in dire straits and Ezekiel gives room for the full weight of their grief. Ezekiel gives space to remember the pain and the sorrow of what the people had endured as they strained to hear some words of good news. While some may want to rush into the words of rescue and restoration, Ezekiel reminds us that it is important to remember that God is responsible for bringing us through the darkness before we reach the light. We need to walk through the valley of the shadow of death, trusting that God walks with us, especially 
in the hardest of times. And that ultimately, God's rod and staff bring protection and rescue. Today's reading is to represent hope for the people who find themselves in the valley of the shadow and may be thinking there's no way out. Ezekiel reminds the people that the way out is through God. Verse 22 reads, Thus says the Lord, I myself will. Imagine the Jewish people in exile, much like we might, are wondering what they can do to bring an end to this situation. Ezekiel gives them an image that also will tell the Jewish people the way out will not come in the way that they expect. They likely expect a military rescue from the Babylonian captivity, an immediate Messiah who will lead a conquering army to overthrow the Babylonian rulers and restore the people to Judah, where they can rebuild Jerusalem. Verse 22 continues with God's pronouncement. I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of the cedar. I will set it out. I will break off a tender one from the topmost of the young twigs. I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. Ezekiel declares that God will take a clipping from the mighty and noble cedar tree and will plant it in a safe place on a high mountain, namely Mount Zion, the very place that sat abandoned for decades because of Judah's neglect of God's word and God's will. This newly planted Judah will not be focused on itself. Rather, it will be a place that under it every kind of bird will live in the shade of its branches will nest winged creatures of every kind. The newly planted Judah will enhance life for others, which God describes as creatures of every kind. In other words, of all other nations. Ezekiel depicts God's grace as procreative and life-giving to all the earth. Verse 23 echoes this great promise of Genesis 12 verse 3, I will use you to bless all the people of the earth. In today's reading, God, through Ezekiel, reclaims that promise made to God's people that all the nations in the world will be blessed through this family of the promise. Thank you for joining me again today as we continue in this week preparing for the third Sunday after the uh, Pentecost, June the 13th, 2021. I hope you're having a great day. Take care. And God bless.